If you want to make friends, if you want to survive in this world, do not break these unwritten rules. Now, you do not want to be caught breaking any of these or else it's just over for you. Like, if you don't want your reputation to just be shot in the leg, I suggest you follow these unwritten rules. No one really says anything. You kind of just make it awkward if you break one of them. So here are the 15 duck certified unwritten rules you have to follow. Coming in at number one, we got to talk about the urinal dilemma. Now, what is the urinal dilemma, you ask? All right, so there's two dudes, all right, and they're pissing, but there's one urinal in between them. Do not go to that urinal and start pissing next to them, especially if there's no dividers. Take the goddamn stall at that point, bro. Like, trust me, the awkwardness that comes from pissing next to somebody is immeasurable. And some people got shy bladders, so you, you might just, like, ruin their piss if you just spawn in right next to them. And now that we're on the topic, please do not let out a sigh of relief when you piss in public. Please don't do that. Like, just for my sake, please. Right, anyways, we gotta move on. Number two, when a situation gets awkward, do not point out that somebody's being awkward or, oh, uh, who's that guy over there. Who's the quiet guy over there? Oh my god, he's so awkward or whatever. Don't verbally say it out loud. You can think it to yourself, but don't fucking say it. Because you're gonna make the situation more awkward by saying it. Like, why would you even want that? Like, that's just stupid. Like, I was in a goddamn restaurant one time with my homies, and then, of course, motherfuckers start yapping about how quiet I am over there, and, th and then they just bring it up. Why is he being so awkward? Well, who's that kid over there? Who is that? He's so awkward. I don't even know you, little bro. Like, why are you even saying this? And you're just gonna make the person you point out feel even worse, so it's gonna get even more awkward. So great job. Like, bro, I just hate the motherfuckers that are like, oh my God, isn't this so awkward? Like, bro, no shit. Moral of this rule, just keep it to yourself. Number three, do not date your friend's sister or brother. Like, bro, you're just disrespecting the code at that point. If you do this, bro, you are the ultimate scumbag. This disrespect from this is insane, bro. Like, imagine if that was your sister or brother getting that crazy pipe from your friend. How does that sit right with people? I don't even know. I don't even think I gotta go into like a whole ass professor 60 minute lecture with this one. It should be pretty self-explanatory. Number four, do not yap and do not interrupt. Sometimes interrupting can happen unintentionally, but do not just straight up yap. Like nobody cares about your vacation to fucking East Guam. At a certain point, it just gets tiring to hear about. Like, you know, you could say like a, a few things about it, but if you don't seem interested, if motherfucker says, damn, that's crazy, just stop. Because some people just be D1 yappers. Like one of my professors this semester, he just yaps, yaps, and yaps. But after hearing a D1 yapper just talk about themselves all the time, it kind of just gets annoying. And speaking of being D1, coming in at number five, do not be a ball hog. You are never going D1 if you're gonna become a ball hog. You need to be a team player if you want to be a d1 football player basketball player soccer player etc lil bro you are not stephen curry putting up threes stop continuously shooting up bricks because you're, you're not gonna make it chances are if you keep missing it pass it off to oh no hmm, maybe one of your four teammates because that's what they're there for not to stand around like a bunch of robots on the court the ball hog really just gives me main character vibes bro like why, why are you just like thinking you're on the field by yourself like there's four other people there with you if you're playing basketball it was like that one kid at fucking daycare that wouldn't share anything he would just play with with all the toys. That's that kid. Coming in at number six, we have do not pull up to somebody's house uninvited. Like if someone says, no, you cannot go or sent you an invite to go to their crib, do not show up. It's pretty self-explanatory, but know, still, even with that, there was still one person that pulled up to my crib uninvited. And it was just the most awkward thing of all time. She just straight up showed up in her whip, rolled down the window and said, hi, like what? And I was just chilling in the front yard with my friends. And she's acting like there's a whole ass party here. Like, bro, I'm not throwing a rager. I'm just hanging out with my friends. And I don't even know how she found out I was hanging out with my friends. That's that's another scary part. And that John Tavius was so awkward. Hey! Uh, hi? Uh, what are you even doing here? There's a party? Why wasn't I invited? Uh, no, the, the, there wasn't a party. And she still got out the whip and started yapping for like 15 minutes and then she left. And me and my friends, you know, thank God for my friends, bro, man. We, we were trying to make it not more awkward than it already was, but we cooked. I think we diffused the situation pretty well. And people who don't diffuse situations well, we call them snitches. The saying snitches get stitches exists for a reason, bro. Like the nerd snitches on me, like, oh, well, teacher, he's cheating. Look at this paper. Like, what did you earn from that? And extra little brownie points for the teacher that you're not gonna have next semester. I don't get what people gain from snitching. If you and your homies get caught in a little dilemma and you get questioned in the office, do not give them anything. And don't do it for Arby's and a little hug juice either. That shit's fucking trash. And it does not matter if your name's Sergio Kitchens either. Stick to the code, man, because if you snitch, everyone's going down, including the person that snitches. But if you stick to the code, you could keep your homies safe. And if you value your friendships, even in the slightest, you will not snitch on your homies. Coming in at number eight, do not 
look at people's phones, period, at all. Sorry, I'm sounding like a sway poo period girl, but it had to be said. And if anyone demands to look through your phone, you gotta dip. There's no trust clearly at all, so you gotta pull the plug. And if you even care about your relationship with others, I would just straight up stop looking through their phone. Well, actually, um, uh, Jonathan, who are you texting on this exact date and time? Like, bro, like, it's their business. Don't be scrolling through if they give you your phone for something. Or if they want to show you a picture, do not swipe left and right on their camera roll. Coming in at number nine. Now, I have the goofiest shit saved in my camera roll. And if someone else just saw that, they would just be confused as hell. If I go to show someone a picture on my phone, I always be making sure the most recent photo on my camera roll isn't anything weird or something really stupid or embarrassing. I'm always ten toes down on the camera roll. Because obviously, we have different friendships with other people and we got different inside jokes. Then I have to explain why the hell said thing is in my camera roll. And it's just fucking awkward when I have to sit there and explain it. Because if it's an inside joke, yeah, obviously they're not gonna fucking get it. Or if you got some brazy shit in your camera roll, good luck with that. I heard some stories about people swiping through camera rolls, and it was awkward. We'll just say that. And now number 10, please, please fucking contribute. Do not be dead weight of the group. Don't get carried. Do your part of the project, the assignment, whatever it is. Do not be the loaf of bread of the group, man. And if you do that, no one's gonna fucking like you. Everyone's gonna just start talking shit about you. So I really don't even see the point of this. Sure, you don't have to do work, but damn, you're not have a good relationship with your coworkers. If you take hella bathroom breaks at your job, if you're in the bathroom for like an hour, you're not contributing at the register or whatever it is, do you expect people to like you? Fuck no. Like you're not even doing your job. You signed up for the goddamn job to contribute. That was the entire point. I always had co-workers who would just straight up hit the Julius Caesar in the bathroom or the Elphington and they would come back like an hour later like nothing happened. Like, no bro, you were supposed to be working that whole time. Put in that work. If you don't want to be the butt of the joke about how you do no work at all in the office, then I suggest you get to work. Lock the hell in. And guess what? You'll also be a joke if you just start bumping music in public. Now people who bump their music like in the middle of the fucking school hallway or like a mall, the subway on a like fat ass JBL speaker, most most likely their music taste is fucking trash. And then they're over there like, yo, hey, turning up like they have the craziest fucking music choice of all time. Most of the time that shit's garbage, so turn it off. And then aux requests that are garbage, you know what? We'll throw that in here too, because like, man, if you make a garbage aux request, you are basically being sent to the gulag metaphorically. I've heard some crazy requests in my time. I have heard fucking we are number one. I've heard the Barbie movie. A lot of trash that just would not go well at a party or like whatever it is. Like if you go play that garbage ass music, keep it to yourself at least. Number 12, do not be that guy that just ruins stuff. Like bro, if you're gonna get a pizza party if you, you're quiet for the day, don't say anything. Don't be that one guy. Some people just let their intrusive thoughts win and then they go, oh, 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 yeah, yeah, oh, oh, yeah. And just start saying random shit. I guarantee you everyone will despise you for the rest of your life. Do not be that guy. Don't ruin it for everyone else because you get a little dopamine spike enjoyment for like two seconds because you're definitely not going to enjoy that rest of the year in that class. I could guarantee you that because at football practice, one person messes up. We all did do push-ups. We all did do laps, etc. And it got so annoying when the lazy ass plate cleaners couldn't fucking pay attention. So there I was getting down on the ground doing 50 push-ups because of one person. And that shit just pisses me off to no end. And that's why I strived at football practice not to be that guy. Because I know if I went off sides, it would have been my ass. And I didn't want to test nothing with the locker rooms. Trust me, you don't. Number 13. If people can't even keep a secret, holy fuck, it is so annoying. I know you're extroverted. All you extroverts out there love to talk, but someone says, don't tell anyone for a reason. Don't go over there and tell your homie who's gonna go tell the, another homie, who's gonna tell this girl and that girl, and all of a sudden, the whole establishment knows your deepest, darkest secrets. Like, do you even care about your homie at that point, bro? Sorry for the voice crack, but damn, this shit got me heated. Like, somehow, motherfuckers knew about my YouTube channel, and I didn't even tell them myself. Oh, yeah, I got a little business going. Uh, your YouTube channel? How the fuck did you know? Sometimes people know a little bit too much about you, or they know something about you that you just completely didn't even expect. And that's because some people can't keep secrets. And coming in at number four, 14, please never ever ask a question at the end of a presentation. Even if you got a question, hold that shit in because you know why? People's grades will go down if you can't even answer the question. Or if they can't answer it, it'll just be awkward as fuck. And you best believe I cannot answer questions most of the time during a presentation. But, 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 duck, actually, you should be an expert in your. <laughs>
<laughs> Anyways, what was I saying? Yeah, don't be an expert in your topic because uh, you're going to forget about it anyway. And before number 15, I just have to mention this little honorable mention. And I'm only helping you guys out navigate your social relationships. So, hey, man, y'all should be thanking me. But please don't leave your shopping cart in the middle of the aisle. Don't make everyone else do more work because you want to be a lazy bum. And they leave a cart full of groceries just chilling in the middle of the aisle. And if you have other roommates, don't be a fucking slob. Basically, the honorable mention in a nutshell, do not be a bum. But the unspoken rule that everybody must follow 100% no matter what, is not starting drama or beef at a party. Like, bro, you don't look tough, man. You just look like a fucking idiot. Like, if Clog wants to get into the ring, then you just look stupid. And you're just making it a pain for everybody else to deal with, too. If we're bringing up, like, Chad and Brad drama with another girl that you had some beef with. Especially if it's an occasion of celebration, like a fucking wedding. Do not bring up drama. And that's it. Those are the unspoken rules you gotta follow by the duck. And that's it. Uh, you'll, you'll socially be a goat. I don't know. But if you enjoyed the video, watch the playlist. Go, go, go now.